Welcome back at uh, Yakayima TV. TV. Today we're going to uh, have a, an interesting talk with uh, Mauricio Kripa. He's the CEO of the company called GR3N, and he is working and doing research and developing a production plant or a pilot plant on making plastic circular based on chemical recycling. So welcome Mauricio, thank you very much for being at our show. Um, and uh, you already showed your first slide, so I'm very curious to, to learn what you are doing with your company regarding chemical recycling. So the floor is yours. Thank you, Peter. Good afternoon to everybody. We used to say making plastic circular because typically plastics are not considered circular, but we want to change the paradigm. And uh, let's start to through what's the current situation with mechanical recycling, especially focusing on polyester. Polyester or PET, polyester in the frame of textile and PET in the frame of packaging. Typically, the 90 million tons of polyester produced globally are used to produce polyester fibers and not bottles. Only one fraction, it means one third of the production is used for packaging. The two thirds of the production is used for textile. But the material that we can really recycle mechanically is only the packaging fraction. And among this packaging fraction, really recyclable with value is the clear fraction and the light blue. The color one mainly is used to produce fibers. But after a t-shirt is produced, what we're gonna do with this at the end of life? Just incineration or disposal and landfill. Then we can say that uh, the major part, if it's not 100% of polyester, is not recyclable. But the point is what impedes the full circularity of polyester? The contaminants, it means other material, colorants, and so on. Then if we remove these contaminants, we have a fully recyclability. That's exactly what we do with our technology. We fall apart the polymer, we recover the building block of the polymer, and doing this, we remove all the colorants and the building blocks. Now, perfect identical to the virgin, to the oil base, can be used to produce virgin polyester identical. Potentially, we can recycle every fraction from textile to bottles. Our process is completely self-sustainable in terms of chemicals because uh, through an electrolysis process, we recycle internally the salt, which is the byproduct of the production, to produce the chemicals that we need for the reaction and for the workup. We need only energy, then the different level of sustainability of the energy you provide to the plant give you different sustainability of the plant. But in any case, we are minus 60% on CO2 footprint compared to the monomers that produced from oil. We started a long time ago, but with the first European project called Symbiotima, we were able to develop our first industrial reactor. Then we assembled the purification process on batch to this reactor. And then now with the second European project called Demeto, we are building a demo plant with the TRL7 with the formal capacity around 1,000 tons per year. The election will be completed by this year. This is an example of our result. We started from very contaminated material, for example, white bottles used for milk, colored bottles, plastic trays that contain 15-20% of polyolefins, means polyethylene, or textiles containing this in case the bottom one, 30% of polyurethane. Mm. A mix of this monomer, we were able to produce this polymer you see on your right, which is perfectly colorless and beautiful. We also were able to recycle material which is terrible because it's composed by two different material, polyester and cotton, 40% yeah. cotton, but we depolymerize the polyester fraction. You can see here the cotton signals and the PET signals. And at the end, we have the monomers in one side and again the cotton perfectly free of every signal of polyester. Then the cotton as well becomes recyclable despite it was blended with polyester and is suitable, for example, to produce 
viscous. Okay, okay. This is the same textile I showed you before. Yeah. And these are the results, chemical results that we have the stability of our process. I think I'm done. Okay, well, that is very briefly, uh, very strong uh, presented uh, what chemical recycling, what you are doing. Now, you tell there is a lot of positive things. There is a, a less CO2 footprint, less energy, etc., etc. Are there no specific requirements in order to, let's say, to, to, to get this process done apart from the factory side? Uh, because it seems so simple and I don't think it is simple. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is simple. Yeah, life is tough. But simply. Yeah. Effectively, effectively, we studied a lot in order to be very robust according to, to the variability of the feedstock. We have to consider that we work with waste. Then yeah. the selection of waste is problematic. Mm. Then since the beginning, when we designed the process at the beginning, we thought about that we have to be able to treat whatever. That's why I, I like this slide, because this slide shows that uh, despite the variability of the feedstock, our characteristics are always the same. Mm -hmm. Then we can say that the process is very robust against the feedstock contamination. Yeah. But this was drawing since the beginning. Yeah. But still, I mean, it, it is, it is, uh... I'm, I'm, got, I'm trying to get, the, it, it's not an easy process in the end. I mean, you, you, you look like, you, you tell it's very simple, but are there no constraints? Are there no, let's say, areas which are difficult to, to and which you've solved, but... Uh, um, we have uh, uh, a threshold in terms of contaminants that we can accept, we, but uh, this threshold is more an economic based. Yeah. Because immediately, if we process 100% polyester, we have monomers for 100%, but if we process 50%, we have 50%, and we have 50% left over. In general, we put a threshold of 70% net content of polyester okay. in order to get the good economics. Um, but it depends on contaminants and what we do with contaminants. For example, if cotton is able to produce viscous in a positive, economically speaking way, why not we don't treat the 40% cotton? Okay. I have to highlight that every process, every passage of purification is very industrial. There is nothing no. fancy. No. But the combination of this passage was really carefully identified mm -hmm. during the development. Okay. Okay. And in the end, you, so you said you're going, you're working on a pilot factory. You have plans to have a first factory yourself. So what is in the end your business? Will you be, be supply uh, factories or will you supply licensing or, or will you be part of the whole value chain or what's your goal with your company? Our goal is to realize, as you said, Peter, the first industrial plant because it's a showcase because we want to license the technology. Yeah. We would like to spread around this technology as much as possible, not just to make money, but also to help the environment because yeah. We think we're really convinced that this is the only way to use plastics in the right way for this world. Okay, okay. Okay, well, thank you very much, Mauricio. Very interesting. And uh, I've never had such a short presentation about how technology works. So thank you very much for this. Always at the end of any presentation uh, we have, uh, I always ask the, the speaker uh, a personal question because they talk about innovation, technology, but there's also a person behind this, let's say, uh, front. And the question is, what is your favorite music or art or food or city or animal? So I'm just intrigued to find out. Well, I love, I love a lot of music. Ah. And the right singers, uh, Bob Dylan, John Baez, uh, Bruce Springsteen, all okay. Italian ones, uh, Fabrizio De Andre. It's I'm very uh, open in music. I like art. Yeah. I like a lot, but now I have kids, then I have no time to go to museums. <laughs> <laughs> in general, I consider myself as an eclectic person. I consider myself as an inventor. I always work in uh, research and development. I invented materials. Yeah. I try to apply creativity yeah. in science. Okay. Well, that's interesting uh, to have this short background of yourself. So I would like to thank you for your presentation, your time, and uh, wish you all the best with uh, your, your project and the pilot factory and, uh, and talk to you soon.
So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Peter.